So guys, today I wanted to show to you guys how exactly the S75 sight actually works. We're going to talk about the radars, the missiles, everything, and how um, in real life it was to control it, to actually use these things, okay? So let's get going. I don't want the video to be too long. So we have three groups of vehicles that are normally used in the S75 sight. We have the main, you know, search radar, we have the tracking radar, and then the launchers. Basically, how it will work is that the first radar, the search radar, the EWR, the early warning radar, would detect the target where it is in a further out position. It would uh, pass those, um, you know, information to the tracking radar. Once it got into range, it would lock the target or just use the information to use the normal SACLUS guidance and it would fire with the launchers tracking with that main tracking radar. The missile would go to the target, self-explode, and it would destroy the target. That's the main idea. But what are the actual systems that are used there? So we start off with the P-12 radar, the Yenisei. It is sometimes called also by NATO as the spoon rest. This radar was the main radar of the S-75 and it was a very good upgrade over the older P-10s, for example, because it was the first radar in the Soviet Union to use the MTI filtering method. Basically, it has a form of pulse doppler um, to be able to ignore ground clutter. This is very important for a radar that is so close to the ground. This radar would have a very slow detection and not really, uh, it's not really the most precise radar ever, but it doesn't need to be. It was basically the idea was to detect where the targets were kinda with a one kilometer precision in the further away distances and it would basically just um, pass that information to the tracking radar to dot that tracking radar be able to um, command the missiles. Okay, uh, the maximum distance that this radar could do a detection is up to 200 kilometers initially. Of course, upgrades were made during the years, uh, we would have to 50 and even more later. But the idea is 200 plus kilometers of range for the larger targets of up to an altitude of 25 kilometers. It has an enormous amount of 180 kilowatts of power output, which is very strong for a radar for that time, especially if you compare to the power outputs that we see uh, on normal, you know, airborne radars that barely get up to like 1 to 5 or even 10 kilowatts, right? So it is an enormous amount of power and it was controlled normally initially by a close nearby truck or even later in upgraded models in the 70s, they would have a truck that were was going to be basically 500 meters away from the actual antenna because the antenna is, of course, a massive seed target, a suppression of enemy air defenses missions target, right? So they would be, you know, as further away as possible to improve crew survivability during an attack on this particular radar. So the idea of this radar, again, is to just initially detect where the targets are and pass that information to the tracking radar. What is the tracking radar? Well, this is the thing. It is the SNR-75. This radar is normally the main radar that everybody talks about when they are talking about the S-75, and it is, it is the Sven Song radar. This radar was um, a little bit different from what you see normally in tracking radars. It was more of a fire control than a tracking radar, but it could track, it could lock and everything, and do even track while scan. But the idea here is that, of course, these missiles, the uh, the, the, the S-75 missiles, they were command-guided SACLOS, right? So, it means that he had two antennas over here to be able to control horizontally and vertically the information that the missile needed to intercept the target. So, of course, he would receive the information from the EWR, the P-12, and then he would lock the target, or it doesn't need to lock the target, but he would fire and use those two antennas to steer the missile he get, giving it information uh, from what the you know the uh, the shooter would give it. Uh, how would that do that? Well, basically like a mouse aim. Okay, so you would have some form of control there uh, or joystick or something like that to control where the missile was going and it would basically be command guided like an ATGM, right? And you would um, give that information to the missile via these two antennas. 
Uh, that's why some RWRs can actually pick up that a missile is being launched. Um, they are not Fox 1s or Fox 3s, right? But uh, they can see that there is a difference in pattern of frequency when there is a launch on the missile to control the missile. And with that, the RWR knows there is a missile coming towards the aircraft, right? Uh, that's what, It was one of the main problems that these older raiders had, right? Uh, of course, it wasn't a bad raider by any means. It was actually pretty amazing for the time. I mean, this whole site entered in service in 1957, more or less, right? So it's a very old system that can do very impressive things. These SNR-75 had a range of about 60 kilometers. Larger targets, it could get up to 100 kilometers or more. Uh, but you know how it is. The power output of these things can get up to 1 megawatt. So it's very powerful in radar uh, technology for the time. Uh, also, you know, I would imagine that it is MTI as well. And yeah, it basically guided the missile tracking or not but uh it would guide the missile no matter what with these uh radio like fire control and tracking radar scheme that is the snr 75 or the fan song and of course then we have to talk about the actual launcher the sm90 right this launcher used the v750 missile in the game we have the 59 version the 759 uh, this would be a very much improved version of the older missiles and it would have basically a 30 kilometer um, you know max altitude and a 60 60 to 65 kilometer max range it would be an impressive missile for the time and yeah it would use command guidance to be able to actually find the target it has an enormous amount of power we already talked about this missile a lot it has 100 plus kilograms of tnt equivalent 380 kilonewtons of thrust initially 34 with the booster for 40 seconds it has a 12g which is pretty good turn for such a large missile i mean it's 2400 kilograms of a missile so it's a very large missile that turns very well actually it has the downside of having a six kilometer minimal range but it can get up to 60 kilometers with the help of the snr like i said command guided guided by these tracking radar these tracking radar by the way with the launchers can guide three missiles at a time to a single target so you can only fire at one target at once and then wait for that target to be destroyed and then you change the target and fire another one but it can guide three missiles to that target to be able to have a perfect hit a fun fact is that there was a version with this with an impressive 15 kiloton nuclear bomb yes there was a S an sn75 the ak model with a 300 kilogram you know warhead that could actually take a uh, a small tactical nuke that would have 15 kilotons of yield you know this is almost the same amount of kilotons that the hiroshima bomb had so you can imagine how much damage something like that could actually bring so and basically this is it guys they would normally uh, lay out these sites in a star pattern just like it is in the game right now this was normally used initially especially in the vietnam war but later they changed because it was a very easy siding and it was very easy to destroy it then so basically it was a whole bunch of uh they had a whole bunch of ideas to actually you know hide these things they were severely used in many many countries you know they were you know used by many 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 countries even to this day and in many many wars vietnam war six day war indo pakistani war yom kippur war iran iraq gulf war yagoslav war uh, the Syrian civil war, I mean, you know, it, there's so many wars that this thing was used and it is an enormous amount of, you know, it, it's basically a very big leap from technology over the older S-25s that were made to basically just protect Moscow. And it was the first true, you know, heavy heater anti-air system that the world had seen right when it was introduced into service of course by this day by today it was a very very it's just a very old system i mean it's from the 50s but it is still a very cool system that i cannot wait to actually test it out uh while playing more with it in war thunder but yeah basically this is it i hope you enjoyed make sure to subscribe leave a like leave a comment and bye guys see ya